Good evening and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Jerome G, and, and these are some of the top stories we have for you tonight. The governor calls for a special session. A department manager is kidnapped on St. Croix. And color your world the local way. These stories and more up next on News Channel 8. <laughs> In our top story tonight, Governor John D. Young has called the Senate into a special session to address our financial situation for the future. Let's take a look. I have today called the 29th legislature into special session this Friday, December 23rd, to approve an agenda of financial measures that they and I know are necessary for our financial sustainability and for the long-term financial health of all in our community. There are many, including me, who wish we did not have to implement such measures. But every member in the legislature knew they would have to eventually face this stark reality. Until now, they have chosen to either duck or delay dealing with the reality and the duty that they knew confronted them. These challenges have been right before all our eyes. Since 2008, when the global recession began, our annual government revenues have been approximately 30% or nearly one third below where they used to be. Like a family that has lost much of its income, we have cut back to bring our spending into line with our income. Unfortunately, these challenges have not been taken seriously by some. Our senators passed a fiscal year budget that they knew was out of balance. They have continued to spend the public's money and they have simply forgiven taxes and debts as if a magic wand wipes it all away out of existence. And all the while, they have pretended or prayed that the day of reckoning would never have come. Or maybe they thought it would not come before the next election. Well, for the 29th legislature, the day of reckoning is this Friday. On Friday, the members of the Senate will have before them for an up or down vote, a bill that calls for the following. One, an increase in the gross receipts tax to the 5% level they were called upon to pass almost one year ago. Two, the reversal of the egregious action taken last week in forgiving a set of obligations from our hospitals which will place an additional burden of more than $90 million on our taxpayers. Three, the reversal of the forgiveness of taxes and fees for a sector of our economy, which was passed without study or cost-benefit analysis. And these for a group that already enjoys an exemption from gross receipts taxes that many other small business people can only dream might be theirs. Four, the elimination of the automatic sunset provision on the gross receipts tax increase, Five, the reduction in the amount to be held in the insurance guarantee fund, thus releasing an additional monies to the general fund from taxes we all pay on insurance policies. And six, authorization for the billing of real property taxes for calendar year 2010 at the same level as the court previously authorized for the billing of the 2009 taxes. These measures require action immediately. At the present time, we will fall short of meeting the payroll of the government in the first months of 2012, and for the balance of the fiscal year as well. Additionally, these actions must be taken now in order for us to continue to provide essential services throughout the territory in the months ahead. And in other news, Governor John D. Young also came out recently to react to Delegate Donna Christensen's proposal for a chief financial officer for our territory. Let's take a look at that. I understand that the um, legislation has been reintroduced with respect to the uh, chief financial officer legislation by the by uh, the delegate, and I continue to be in opposition to it. Um, I don't think that there is a need for that legislation, particularly at this particular at this time. You know, the, the fact is, and we acknowledge it, and I think. It's the one area that um, I, I share some concerns with the legislatures. We have our financial challenges, um, and those challenges are not any different than a host of other municipalities throughout this country. In fact, I think we've done a, a very good job in how we've managed to date. Now, we've got some very real challenges coming forward in 2012, and I'm going to, you know, those are discussions I will have with this legislature in terms of how we address those challenges. But under no circumstances do I think that the introduction of legislation that mandates by the Congress that we have to have a chief financial officer legislation is needed whatsoever. 
We've completed our FY 2009 audit. We're about to complete the FY 2010 by the middle of next year. We'll have then done the uh, FY 2011. So the only one that will then be out is fiscal year 12. So the, the validity of our financial information is something that we can provide financial statements. We have disagreements on revenues with the legislature, but those are disagreements based on how we view the economy, how we view how growth will take place, and also expenditures and how we spend money. So that is not an indication that there's anything wrong with our numbers. That's just an indication of, of there being a different view as to economic activity. And a Kmart manager was kidnapped earlier this morning in the Frederickstead area. News Channel 8's West Small files this report. Thank you very much, Jerome. You know, uh, Channel 8 staff and management has taken a back burner to crime, especially the holiday festival season. We've tried to stay positive, but lately we do have to come out and protect our viewers. Let me tell you what's going on. A man was shot um, about 24 hours ago or so as he was dumping his garbage in Concordia at night. Luckily, that man is alive because a bullet uh, hit, apparently hit a pot and ricocheted. They tried to shoot his car up about nine or 10 times just trying to get his car. So please be careful. He was shot in the leg and refused medical treatment. Why am I here then? At Kmart West, two o'clock early this morning, uh, we have a manager of the store that was kidnapped and robbed of his vehicle. With that, let's go to Melody Rames, VIPD spokesperson. Criminal Investigation Bureau detectives are investigating a kidnapping and robbery that occurred at Kmart West. Police said the store manager was kidnapped and then forced to open the store safe. Police were dispatched to Kmart West Interstate Kane at about 2.15 a.m. and spoke to the assistant manager who told police that he came outside of the store and was approached by an unknown man wearing dark clothing and carrying a handgun. The suspect ordered the 53-year-old victim to the victim's car and told him to drive to the west side of Kmart. There, another individual entered the car. The victim was then told to drive further and two more suspects entered the car and returned to the Kmart store. The four suspects and the victim entered the store. The suspects ordered the five employees who were in the store to the ground and ordered the manager to open the store safe. The suspects took an undisclosed amount of cash and fled the area in the manager's vehicle. Police issued an all-points bulletin on the vehicle, a silver PT cruiser, and the vehicle was recovered by police in a state Hogginsburg. Criminal Investigation Bureau detectives and forensic detectives and technicians are following up on this case. Anyone with any additional information about this kidnapping and robbery is asked to call detectives at 712-6037, 712-6077, or you can call Crime Stoppers USVI at 1-800-222-TIPS. At Kmart West, I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. And the VIPD still need your help to locate 15-year-old Kawanda Rodriguez, who's been missing now for quite some time. Here's Melody Rames with an update. Youth Investigation Bureau detectives on St. Croix are still searching for 15-year-old Kawanda Rodriguez, who was last seen getting off the school bus at the Arthur Richards Junior High School on December 5th. Police believe that Kwanda is being sheltered by a person or persons in the community, and they remind the community that anyone sheltering, hiding, or concealing this minor from her family and the Virgin Islands Police Department can face serious criminal charges. Kwanda Rodriguez is five foot six inches tall and weighs 102 pounds. She has long brown hair and a brown complexion. She was last seen coming off the school bus at her school, but school administrators said she did not attend classes that day. She was wearing her school uniform, a dark blue pleated skirt, and a white blouse. Anyone having any information on the whereabouts of Kwanda Rodriguez is asked to call 911 or the Youth Investigation Bureau detectives at 7126046. Anyone aiding this minor can face criminal prosecution. Thanks, Melody Rames of the Virgin Islands Police Department. And when we come back from this break, color your world with Colorama. Stay with us on Channel 8. And let's take a look at your Caribbean report for tonight.
In your Caribbean report tonight, we started Nassau, the Bahamas, where the Minister of State of Finance, Zhivago Lanning, has defended the Bahamas government recent borrowing and current debt levels and stressed that the Ingram administration is under no threat of defaulting on its loans. His comments came after a lead economic specialist for the Caribbean at the Inter-American Development Bank told the Guardian Business that there was a concern that the country's public debts, its debt to the GDP ratio, could reach precarious levels if preventative measures are not taken. And turning now to St. Kitts, where the end of the year is beginning to round out, and a number of the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force may soon have a number of vacancies in the top ranks if and when the senior officials retire. It has come to the understanding that three high-ranking officials in the force are up for retirement, including the second-in-command Deputy Commissioner Stanford Liber. According to a reliable source, the Assistant Commissioner Joseph Richards, responsible for operations, will retire in early January of 2012. The newly appointed ACP in Nevis, Robert Liver will soon also face the retirement age of 55 in 2012. And finally, turning to Cuba, where Cuban President Raul Castro met on Sunday in Havana with a delegation of the Holy See, now on an official visit to the island to coordinate the next trip to the Caribbean island of Pope Benedict the 16th, scheduled for early 2012. During his conversation with Alberto Gaspari, administrative director and the person in charge of organizing the Pope's international trips, the Cuban leader of state expressed his satisfaction at the announcement of the upcoming visit of the pontiff of the Catholic Church and head of state of the Vatican, adding that he will be received by the Cuban people with affection and respect, according to an agency report. The two parties spoke about the excellent state of relations between Cuba and the Holy See and assessed the development for preparations for the visit. And that's your Caribbean report for tonight. And the great folks at Colorama are expanding their service for you. And they've got some great deals for the Christmas season. Here's Wes Small with the story. Happy holidays there, Jerome. And again, to you and your family and to the Saldana family. That's right. Let me see if I can get this right. Brizaidi. Brizaidi. I got it right. Yeah. The lovely Brizaidi Saldana. We are in Gallows Bay at Colorama. And now Colorama, number one paint store in the Eastern Caribbean, in, in the world actually, uh, definitely in our area, and in St. Croix for over 35 years. Um, I wanna say Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to your dad, Jose Saldana. But a lot of people don't know, Brizaidi, that you are here in Gallows Bay, and uh, you've been here now for over a week, mm -hmm. still under the guise of Benjamin Moore, um, still number one, and still with the LIAC and all the problems with the 8% and everything. <laughs> you and your wonderful family are expanding. First of all, uh, I want to thank the community for allowing us to stay here in business in St. Chris for over 35 years, for giving us the opportunity to serve them, and for knowing that my family stands by their products. My dad, before he got into business, he did a lot of research, and he still does. We believe in selling quality products at a reasonable prices, but never under, underestimating the friendship. Um, my dad feels that the customers are our friends. They are the people we're gonna see at the shopping center. They're the people we're gonna see at the church. And um, we wanna make sure that whatever we sell is quality. And um, here in the Gallows Bay store, we're gonna be doing a lot of different things. We're going into the trends of the new generation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we became two Benjamin Moore signature stores. The one in Casa Coquille and the one here, we're gonna be doing color uh, consultations in-house by appointment and we can also go outside in the field see your home and help you with the color designs of your home or recommend a designer that could co come into your home and help you design your home um, also we're gonna have an espresso bar and a lot of different things going into the new year um, I want to thank also the Armstrong family for allowing us the opportunity to come here to Gallows Bay. And um, we're excited and we're happy to have you guys here with us too. Yeah. And, um, you know, I want to invite everybody to come in. We have a special going on at the other store in opening of this one. We're going to have uh, four gallons of paint and you get one gallon free on selected Benjamin Moore paints. That's on cash sales only. And every Saturday, don't forget the 15% off that we have at the Casa Coakley location and 90% of the inventory. We're going to uh, try to um, pull a sneak one uh, on on uh, Jose Saldana, on Mr. Saldana. Surprise, Jose, you know, I know you're camera shy, but it's like your lovely daughter was saying, you tried to get your other daughter down here, but she's camera shy. Okay. 
four gallons of paint taking effect immediately, and you get one free of Benjamin Moore selected paints. Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad, Jose. That, that's right, Wes. Um, yeah. uh, I want to thank you for coming here, and uh, and I want to thank all the people of St. Christ for patronizing, for patronizing me yeah. and my family for for more than 30 years. I am a proud Christian. I graduated from Central High School, hmm. and you know I'm like you see, I'm from a very early age in this business, but I think that my success has been uh, selling top quality product, a reasonable price, and a good service, and friendship. Uh, friendship last, but not the least. <laughs> you know, friendship is very important. You got to treat the customer right. So again, I want to thank you for coming here, and I, w I would like to let know the public that we still continue for the last two years, we've been doing it, given a 15% or 90% of the inventory. That's every every Saturday, 15% or 90% of our inventory. At Colorama, yes, sir. Season's greetings to all. Yes, sir. Colored up right for the holidays. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. And when we come back from this break, Stanley and the Sleepless Nights. Stay with us. Well, he's been doing the Christmas caroling for decades. Yes, we're talking about the traditional music of Stanley and his 10 sleepless nights. Let's take a look.
Nugget, 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 nugget. 